Yeah, we've got a bunch of questions uh, coming sure. in. Sure, you want um, to tell me the questions while this is going on? Is that too loud in the background? Not really. I think we're we're good okay, there. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so we've got two questions uh, uh, sure. that are kind of similar. Uh, one is from Anirban. Uh, he's asking why do microwaves have defrost function? Are they just melting the ice? Uh, a very similar question from. Um, let me read it out. Where is the chat? Uh, again, why do um, uh, uh, where the thing? Um, yeah, why why is there a thaw button? What what is happening there? Um, okay. Yeah. So to to go back to the defrost function, you know, why do you have a defrost function? That's you know, uh, some microwaves uh, have a way to slightly change the the power. Uh, the, the Panasonic has a, a patent on that, uh, but mostly it's to just again do this uh, cycling thing. So it, it essentially puts it at low power uh, and then does it for a lo longer time, right? And then uh, some of them are, are programmable or are programmed that you know after the initial things where there's a longer time between the on and off cycles, then it, it you know uh, the the time between those cycles are are, are less. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the other question? Yeah, the same thing. What, what is the thought? Uh, so we got another question from Gopal Chandrasekharan, um, who says, um, "I've noticed these hot spots, uh, but putting five uplums in a circle, they always started heating up at the same spot." Yeah. So that's essentially because you know the the where the nodes are uh, uh, in the microwave, and it's not you know distributing the microwaves evenly throughout and so so th that's why it's actually good to sort of map the hot spots in your microwave um, so how do you so one way to do is you know not have it just straight at the, at the bottom uh, have it slightly higher up so let me take this out it should be ready oops And so, I'll put this here. And so here's the chocolate cake. I it may not look very pretty. Sometimes you can just have it uh, in your um, in the mug itself. But just give it a little bit of time because uh, it's still steaming. Uh, but in here, as you see, uh, you know, right here in, in few minutes, you can you can make yourself good chocolate cake. You can you, know, you make it pretty by putting some chocolate mousse or whatever flavor you want uh, on it. Any other questions? Yeah, we've got a question from Kunal Vaidya. Sure. Uh, Kunal is asking, is cocoa like chocolate bar without lecithin? Oh yeah, so that good question. So why do you have, uh, you know, you know all of these things, you know. So a good bar of chocolate, right, should have uh, cocoa. Um, actually, you know what? Let me let me do this. I don't know if you can see this now. Maybe not. Oops, upside down. So good bar of chocolate. Actually, you know what? Sorry. Uh, let me just go back to my slide over here. Uh, a good bar of cocoa has cocoa solids, uh, sugar, cocoa butter, right? Co uh, and so um, the amount of cocoa solids it has, you know, 55% or 75%, that's what that comes from, right? Uh, uh, the other thing, it, and um, that is actually extremely bitter. Right, so the more you have, that's why it, that's bitter chocolate. It has more you know, percentage of cocoa solids, and then you have cocoa butter. Um, so when you have chocolate, actually it's cocoa butter uh, and cocoa mixed back together. Right, and that way you can control how much of those cocoa solids you have. Now the separation of cocoa butter from cocoa solids is actually very energy intensive, which is why it's you know expensive you know besides the sourcing uh, it's very energy intensive uh, and that's why cocoa butter is also very expensive uh, which is why some you know cheaper 
chocolates or you know not such great quality chocolates use other fats you know uh, 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 but cocoa butter is fantastic because of its properties its melting properties it melts at you know about 37 at least one of the forms of uh, cocoa fat melts at 37 degrees which is your body temperature right the the real uh, you know when you say melt in the mouth deliciousness that's where uh, you know cocoa butter is really good at right uh, and so that's what cocoa solids are uh, compared to cocoa butter so uh, and then you have lecithin there to keep all of these things mixed together so a good bar of co uh, of chocolate should have nothing else except these you know cocoa solids cocoa uh, uh, butter and sugar and then whatever maybe some vanilla or something so if you're having white chocolate for example that's mostly just fat it's mostly cocoa butter uh, and sugar and maybe vanilla right it doesn't have the cocoa solids of course you'll have some faint traces of, of, of cocoa uh, but otherwise it's uh, you know it's just the cocoa butter or the cocoa fat does that answer your question uh, and any other questions I'll be happy to take yeah, we've got a couple of uh, questions um, sure. quite similar actually so uh, Gokul Chandrasekharan asks how much to change the weight of other solids if I remove the egg um, and while oh. you're and while you're answering that you can you can probably also answer uh, Bibas who's asking when we make eggless mug cakes it's uh, it gets stuck on the mug wall why didn't yours um, it came out just like that. Uh, does the egg play any role or is it the amount of oil? No. So, I mean, if you want to prevent it uh, sticking to the the, the, the the mug you're using, and it also depends on the kind of mug, how porous or not it is. You can just put a little bit of oil, you know, uh, and in the mug before that. Um, you, you can make eggless. You just have to, uh, you know, play around with, uh, you know, you can add more milk. Or, or whatever it is to, to have some protein content which kind of binds and keeps things together. Uh, otherwise, you know, these are sort of, uh, this one I've I kind of optimized for an egg, um, but you, 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 there are a lot of uh, eggless mug cakes as well. And in terms of sticking, it's just, you know, uh, it again, depends on the, the, the material of the container, how porous it is or not, uh, which is why I like this glass one because it doesn't stick so much compared to some of the porcelain ones. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Sachiko, um, I'm hope, I hope I get, got the pronunciation right. Sachiko asked, what is the right amount to, uh, compared to the cup so that it will not overflow? Is uh, there a standard answer for this? Yeah, so I mean, again, that depends on the cup. So uh, in fact, my daughter uh, likes to make uh, mug cakes. I didn't put that picture a few days ago. Uh, she had just made it. And she likes to use this cup, uh, and even this one you can see. Then, uh, so the other advantage of this cup, as you can see, it's flared this way, uh, which is nice because uh, then it doesn't kind of overflow. It has some space to expand as it goes up. Um, and I, frankly, I, I'll tell you, uh, you know, if you make too much of the batter, don't put all of it in the cup, right? Um, so yeah. Did, I hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Um, so we've got another question. Uh, Nikhil Pereira asks, "How does popcorn work in the microwave? What, what's the what's happening there?" Oh, I see. Yeah. So popcorn is actually uh, interesting because it's you know it's dried corn kernel, uh, and so you know there are some you know polar molecules in there, and that gets heated in small bit of moisture. And that basically that's essentially what leads to that whole thing just puffing and expanding right yeah, I mean if you think about why does an uh, you know a plum expand right so those you know whatever those spaces again so the one thing is water but the other is also air spaces right the air spaces also will expand right just with heat right and so that's basically what the expansion and then puffing is right so, so you know whatever small amounts of you know trap moisture or other pulp molecules heat up uh, that will then lead to that you know explosion and or you know puffing up. Super. Uh, Madhavi uh, Sate asks, there are just too many buttons on the microwave which I don't understand. Ultimately use it only for eating food. Um, do you have an answer for this? No, no that, that's actually a great question. So yeah, yeah, you're right. A microwave but ha does have, you know, too many uh, buttons. So all you need to know is, you know, it heats water very efficiently Then the microwave is actually very, it's fantastic for reheating food, right? And that's because it's, it heats up water. 
So all you need to know is you know how long you want to heat it, right? Uh, and you either heat it at full power. If you want to heat it at a lower power, that's when you have things that are uh, sort of non-homogeneous. If you have things, you know, uh, stuff with different fats, you know, different fat content in different parts of it, uh, or you know, if you have things that are very dense, um, then so because remember. Uh, there's also what's known, I didn't go into too much detail of that, is penetration depth of the microwaves inside food. So once the, f the microwave hits the, the, the surface of whatever it is, the food, then it's going to start, um, it'll get refracted and going towards the center of that, right? But it can only penetrate to a s certain amount. And as I said, microwave, uh, the, the wavelength is about you know, 12 centimeters. So if you have thin pieces of food, those will heat up much faster. Right, so actually, the buttons itself won't don't make that much of a difference. The only uh, use the other u button that you want to use is the, the the power button. So if you have things which have water, but also other kinds of things, you just want to or or if you're, um, for example, rice and you're heating up other things and you splash some water around, uh, you want to he heat it at a slightly lower power. Uh, because otherwise the water parts will start boiling or or overheating will the re rest of the food won't be uh, that hot so with these I guess three buttons right power level button uh, and then time button uh, and then the of course the on button uh, th that's really all you need hopefully that helps lovely um, so we've got um, the question from Dave uh, Dave Dixit asks, uh, many bakers and baking enthusiasts prefer the OTG, the oven toaster grill, the conven uh, conve conventional oven or convectional oven compared to the microwave. Uh, but there are things that the OTGs can't do. It's always OTG versus microwave. Is there any technology that involves both? Well, I think there are some hybrid ones you get in which, you know, it has a microwave function as well as, uh, you know, it has other elements in there. Um, so these are just two different technologies. If you think about a, a, a convection oven, essentially that circulates air also inside. It's like an air fryer, which is basically a convection oven. But essentially, so if you have a standard oven where you just have a heating element, uh, then that just is essentially also radiation, except it's thermal, you know, infrared radiation. And, and then that heats up. So the heat distribution is not that great. And so by adding a fan or something, you, you, you have some circulation in there. And that's basically what a convection oven does, right? It, it has better circulation of the, the, of the heat inside. Um, the microwave works very differently in that sense. It's more efficient in directly getting the radiation to the food. But the only difference uh, uh, or thing you have to be careful there is it's very efficient in heating up water molecules or polar molecules right so if, depending on the kind of food so you, it's it's hard to say this is better than that um, certainly the microwave is more energy efficient when it comes to heating up water and polar molecules otherwise you know depending on what you're heating up and how you're heating it's different but uh, a microwave oven it's difficult to get brown things right you difficult to get browning and there's a lot of flavor in 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 sort of the brown uh, foods uh, and so for those purposes sometimes uh, uh, hi some of those hybrids are useful hopefully that makes sense yeah I, i'll actually add to that because um at uh, at home we have this microwave uh, not right now in bangalore but back in chennai is this it's a it's a, a combined uh, conven conventional oven uh, with the microwave and also a mode called the steam microwave. Basically, that when it's running, it just, uh, if you fill it with a bit of water on the top, it just sort of um, pushes steam into the uh, into the oven area. So it, uh, I've used it to uh, sort of uh, reheat rice without losing dryness, without losing the texture. Are you okay, Nas? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think my mic cut out. Okay, yeah. Huh. Okay. We've yeah, got so a... I think having having the hybrid is 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 great, right? So it, you get both. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so we've got another question from uh, actually two questions are coming back to back from Kunal Vaidya. Um, 
uh, why can't all corn kernels work for making popcorn? Or to put it conversely, why do we have special different pop popcorn making packets for microwave and other traditional um, cooking methods, I suppose? Uh, also asking, why aren't all porcelain mugs plates considered microwave safe? Oh, I see. Yeah, so a uh, lot, lot of questions. So yeah, uh, different ones. So, so as far as the popcorn goes, you know, what different kinds of popcorn, why, why are they different? Right. So one is, um, again, it depends on the variety, variety of corn. So you can have different varieties of corn and in, depending on the content, uh, uh, the both the, the starch and the protein and other, uh, you know, uh, moisture content within the kernel, they, they pop differently. Uh, and, you know, some are is even bred for specifically for for popping. Uh, so that that's one aspect. Um, uh, the, the the other question, which was very uh, uh, interesting, was regarding was regarding the uh, different bags you get for my, you know popping in the uh, microwave and so on. Uh, yeah, so ideally, you know, I've taken you can just take a brown paper bag, a small paper bag, uh, put you know corn in it, or you know you take the corn kernels, coat them with oil, uh, and then put them in the bag. You just close the top. Uh, you can put a, you know just staple it uh, it's fine as long as it's not too sharp you shouldn't get any sparks or arcing uh, and then just put that in the microwave right that works uh, the other thing to uh, though is there are actually a lot of containers for heating food uh, designed specifically for the microwave right so even the packaging the way the food is cut and the packaging itself sometimes there are slight metallic uh, or coatings or inserts within the packaging, maybe not just for, for popcorn, but other microwave uh, packaging or microwave food packaging are designed in such a way as to reflect the, the microwave so that the food inside heats evenly. In fact, some of those are packaged, you know, the, the ones that are manufactured for, you know, you know microwave uh, dinners and so on. They are packaged in such a way that the packaging itself uh, leads to the food uh, being uh, heated much more evenly uh, than if you say put it in. Uh, also, uh, remember, depending on the kind of container you're using, whether it's glass or porcelain or so on, that has its own thickness and sort of thermal uh, conductivity and and the way it you know works um, that will affect the food inside getting heated. Right. Uh, hopefully, that answers that part of the question. The third part of the question or the third question was why do different containers have uh, you know why are they microwave safe or not and that has to do again with the dimensions um, so if you think about uh, a, a, you know this is sort of a, a round dish but if you have like a rectangular dish with corners um, you'll always have more of the heat stresses in the corners and so on that has to do with again uh, the, the, the you know one is the material but it's also how it's made if it's porous if there's some things in there then over time that will develop uh, stresses right uh, and so then that can you know over time you know the the heat stress you know heating cooling heating cooling that over time can lead to if there's any small defects depending on how it's manufactured leading to cracking and shattering some materials you cannot use in the microwave for example melamine right melamine or melamine is actually a, a, a molecule which is similar to proteins that has nitrogen in it uh, it's a it's polar and that's why you can't use it in the microwave it'll start burning it'll it gets heated up so there's different materials uh, which react to the microwave radiation whether they can absorb it or not um, and, and that makes a difference in terms of what you can put in a microwave or not hopefully that answers that part of the question yeah um, so Dave uh, has a clarification. I think I uh, I understood Dave's question wrong. Um, he's saying uh, Dave's actually saying I actually meant the standard oven and not the convectional oven. Uh, but is there a big difference between convection and OTG? So uh, can you just quickly clarify what's the OTG? Oven toaster grill. It's one of those little things that used to be very oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So yeah. So the the standard oven is essentially just has a heating element right and it just depends on the you know the thermal the thermal the radiation going and hitting the food and then that food slowly warming up right from the outside 
the microwaves are more efficient because it actually hits the the, the in terms of the the transfer the the microwaves heat up the the food the convection oven uh, basically has a circulation uh, of the the molecule the, the uh, of the air inside so it's a little bit more even heat distribution so it's not just from one side uh, and it's a little bit better um, what did I miss? Yeah, so the OTG, you know, you combine multiple things. So if you have, uh, so when you have an oven, the way you typically have an oven, it, it goes back to sort of the, uh, again, the, the coal and other things or other heat so ways to heat up your oven. Is you just have a heating element, uh, whatever it is at the bottom of the oven, right? And then that heats up. Uh, when you have a, uh, what's a broiler, that has a heating element on top. Uh, and so, um, you know, when you when you're toasting, then you can you know toast on both sides, and these are just different ways of putting the heat heating elements into whatever that cavity or space. Uh, you know, in in that sense, then the microwave is is different. But otherwise, those OTG and other things, it's just different ways of applying heat. Uh, you know, to to, uh, to whatever it is in there. In fact, if you take a saucepan or pan, uh, you can essentially simulate an oven by by you're keeping it covered, right? If yeah. it's dry. And which is what a Dutch oven sort of does, no? It's just a large right. thing with a heavy lid on top. Um, there's a question from John um, who's asking, uh, there is uh, a question in some quarters you, saying that using microwave could be dangerous for health. Is there any truth in this? Are there any safeguards required? Right. So, so in terms of the 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 nutri there are some you know nutritional concerns and so on. You know, which I've heard over the things. You know, it destroys the food and all that. Frankly, any kind of heating method, you're going to you know uh, affect the molecules, right? Uh, so, in that sense, frankly, uh, because you heat foods uh, for less time, or you're exposing it to that much less. In fact, you in in it's more energy efficient, but also, you know, there are be nutritional benefits to the microwave. Now, I don't want to go too deep into that because, you know, you know, how much of a difference uh, does that make or not? You know, it's not going to be make that much of a difference. But in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know, damaging your food and so on, it's not really any different from other modes of heating and cooking right in terms of how it affects the food molecules does that hopefully that answers your question yeah i think that sort of uh, does cover um, you know the the question um, we have a sort of fun question i think you should be able to answer this uh, from nandita who's asking do chemistry professors drink coffee in a pyrex beaker all the time no this is my morning coffee I, I, it's still morning here, so this is my morning coffee. Uh, th these are uh, these are these are actually more useful for cake, um, but yeah, I, I drink in whatever I have uh, available. Fantastic. Uh, do we have more questions, people? You go on for another ten minutes, and then we'll wrap up. Um, if you got, if you got something. Actually, I wanted to ask you when you were talking about the hydrogen uh, bonds, if you can explain sure. it a little bit more, um, because, uh, you know, uh, just a little bit more, because I, I some of it went a little bit over my head also. Okay. All right. So I didn't want to go too much in the chemistry, but since you asked, uh, uh, let me see if I can line this up. Uh, so. Um, let me do one thing. Let me just take this off. Uh, one second. So this was a slide I, I didn't show earlier. I thought maybe there's, oops. Sorry. So this was a slide I didn't show earlier. 
uh, and this is sort of the periodic table and, and you, know, you don't have to know too much about this and you know the, the, there's like you know um, actually you know, all you need to know is that uh, this is just an arrangement of the the elements and all it is is all the um, molecules or all the you know, atoms want to be like the noble gases at the end right uh, all, oops all the like the noble gases at the end and so that's why carbon has four bonds uh, and oxygen has two bonds uh, and that's why you know you have one carbon and two oxygen so uh, the the only, uh, the other thing to know from the periodic table is everything that uh, to the right except for the noble gas everything to the right and when you go up uh, those are more electronegative right so uh, let me just put this on So, so hydrogen bonding uh, is uh, the interaction between hydrogen when it's connected to a more electronegative atom. So electronegative atoms are the ones that are up and to the right, right? So the fluorine is probably the most electronegative. Uh, um, where's the one before that? Oh, I, was, I don't have that slide here, sorry. So, um, so, so you have oxygen uh, and, uh, or a halogen. Uh, will have uh, hydrogen bonding. So the hydrogen, uh, so remember that oxygen also has other electrons. So there's an interaction between uh, the oxygen and the hydrogen on another molecule, right? Which is kind of attracting them uh, together. Uh, does that answer your question? And so when you have lots of these hydrogen bonds, those you know, weak interactions. So we say hydrogen bonds, to, but they're not bonds like covalent bonds in which uh, which are sort of you know electrons shared between two uh, atoms like hydrogen and oxygen in water uh, so the hyd the hydrogen bond is the small uh, it's it's not depicted in this but it's between the, the hydrogen here uh, which is the white part one and the red ball of another molecule so when you put them all together uh, there's these very very weak interactions but you have so many of them that you need to overcome that uh, when you need when you want to boil for example because when you boil then the molecules what's the difference between you know vapor uh, and and liquid it's the the molecules are much further apart than uh, liquid water when the molecules are closer together so to go from liquid to gas you need to you know uh, overcome all the interactions and so you need to supply energy which is uh, you know by heat or whatever and so water has a high boiling point you have to you know supply much more uh, energy uh, because of all of those hydrogen bonding interactions that need to be overcome does that make sense yeah that makes perfect sense and that also explains why the microwave is a lot more efficient than um, you know heating it with a with a stove or something else right right because then you're depending on conduction yeah. Right. Fantastic. So I think maybe a similar question uh, Anirban asked earlier. Um, yeah, he says, uh, can you explain how an induction, uh, I don't know, this is, I, this is, I know there's not exactly microwave, but how, do you want to explain how an induction works versus a microwave? Is there a major difference in this? Yeah, I know induction is different based on sort of a magnetic uh, field and so on. Uh, so that's kind of different. Uh, to be honest, I'm not I haven't really kept up with exactly how induction technology works, uh, but it's it's but it's a different way of heat transfer. It's it's completely different from microwaves in that sense. Okay, fantastic. Um, CJ says I have a teacher once who said using metal vessels in the microwave was okay as long as you don't touch the door. Uh, is that true? Ah, so as you saw, you know, you can put metal in a microwave, you can put foil in a microwave. Uh, frankly, you can boil an egg in a microwave. Um, if you just put the egg inside the microwave, it's going to you know, explode. Uh, but, you know, uh, using, so if you put an egg in water so that the, the, the microwaves, you know, go into the water, heat up the water, uh, it'll be okay. But you still might have some rupturing or explosion. So to, to counter that, you can just cover it with foil. Uh, and, and then put it in the water and you can, you know, uh, 
heat up the egg. Uh, it's much more practical to heat up, to boil water anyway and, and, and heat up the egg that way or you know if you want to really use your microwave because it's more efficient heating water you can boil water in the microwave and then you know put the egg inside if you and you can cover the egg raw egg uh, in the shell with foil and then put it inside that hot water and then continue to heat it uh, and then that will you know you can boil the egg so you can use metal so the the, the problem with metal comes in is if there are any sharp edges and then that's where then essentially a metal is a very good conductor of electrons right so there's a lot of uh, sort of let's call them free somewhat free electrons or loose electrons uh, just because th those metals tend to have lots of them um, and so when the the energy is incident on the metal those electrons can uh, get excited and they can they conduct through, and metal is a good conductor so if it comes to a sharp point uh, and you have a lot of accumulation then you can get arcing right and so then that's when you have sparks uh, but it doesn't have to be metal. So, for example, if you take, to, you know, a grape and cut it in half, uh, that's sometimes fun to do. Uh, again, I'm suggesting these because you know I can show you these, but what's the fun in that? You know, you should go do it yourself. But you can, if you take a grape and cut it in half, but just make sure you're careful. Uh, if you cut it in half, you can uh, and, and keep it together. You can see a little bit of plasma, the arc between the the the, the grape ha halves. Uh, so yeah, so metal in general I is okay. You just have to be careful. Uh, I had some other bulbs, but I didn't put them in there because I, I saw in the bulb, uh, some of them had kind of sharp uh, parts. So I, I didn't think that, that that would be okay. Then you'll start getting arcing. But otherwise, you know, it, it's okay. Meaning you don't want to do it for a long time, right? And it's not normal uh, in the sense that uh, in terms of what's its intended use. The intended use is to heat up mostly water or other food food like uh, molecules but in, in in chemistry labs actually we do use microwave um, reactors because those that it's a, essentially it's an energy source that's all it is right so you just have to make sure you use it appropriately yeah uh, in fact uh, we have a question it's not a question I think um, this person missed the early part of your talk uh, asking before you put the egg back in the microwave you said something about removing the bulb uh, which bulb we were referring to so um, so just to answer that, uh, uh, Dr. Das was uh, demonstrating how electrons worked inside a microwave and uh, he did an experiment where he showed the bulb uh, that was inside a microwave to sort of um, stimulate how uh, these things move inside the oven. Um, so that's the bulb in the microwave. You know, one of those old jokes about how do you get a pop into a fridge and things like that. So I think it's <laughs> set up to a nice joke there. Um, we have uh, uh, Kunal Vijay is saying uh, in induction stuff we still have the dependency on conduction of temperature from the bottom of the pan uh, to the food and to the food item transfers heat from one part to the other. But in microwave the food itself gets heated up directly. I think he says, which is true, I suppose. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, uh, in in the microwave again, you know, depending on the food, also the thickness of the food. The, the the radiation hits the, the the microwaves hit it directly and heat heats up heats up the food whereas in induction again it's only what's at the bottom of the pan um, you know starts getting heated in that sense it works similar to a stove top right except it's just a different way of delivering the heat it's not a flame or a electric uh, burner it, it's an induction um, you know of that energy into the, the, the into the pan or the bottom of the pan yes that's correct so um, I think we've covered most of, actually we've covered all the questions that we would ask um, and these people have more last minute questions, in which case we can take a couple of more and then we can wrap up. Is Amal going to ask us a question? So I think we can sort of uh, wrap here. Um, do you have any last uh, uh, advice or help, helpful tips for people? Oh, uh, advice, helpful tips, uh, you know, keep experimenting. Uh, it's always fun to uh, play with your food in the sense that uh, as, as long as you learn something from that. 
and of course you know you know make sure you do it in a in a in a safe way fantastic okay so i think uh, we'll uh, wrap here thank you so much uh, dr das thank you for coming on and uh, doing this uh, sort of multi multimodal presentation no <laughs> multimedia presentation with the uh, yes sir uh, i'm sorry my daughter is very excited to ask a question mm -hmm. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you go ask your question. Uh, there is some other way of doing popcorn, not only one way. No, there's lots of ways to make popcorn, right? You can make it in the microwave, you can do it on a stove, like in a, in a, pa, uh, in a, in a pot. What, what way do you like to make microwave? Uh, You're new. <laughs> Am I mute? <laughs> Oh, I can hear you, Dr. Uh, Plus. Okay, yeah. So uh, I was actually just asking Amal what way she likes. So there's lots of different ways. She's correct. Thank you for coming on and uh, doing this. Amal, uh, what are the ways do you like to make popcorn? I hear some typing in the chat. That's me. I'm just okay. messaging. <laughs> okay. What way do you like to make your popcorn? I like to make it on the gas. Oh, that's excellent because then you heat it up from the bottom, right? And do you get good popcorn that way? That's fantastic. So the other important thing in terms of whether you use microwave or other, ultimately you want to use something that you're comfortable with and that you know helps you uh, get through your day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, any more uh, questions, people? Okay. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, you know, have a good uh, rest of the weekend or in the coming week.